Listen, let's talk about this uh, Robert Troy situation on Ready One yesterday. I mean, give us a lowdown on what he didn't declare and for somebody who is meant to be the Minister of Company Regulation to o have oversights like this is pretty it, appalling. It's an interesting one because this story is actually going on for about two weeks at this stage, mm. um, sort of with a kind of a drip feed nature to it. Different little bits coming out here and there. And yesterday, in an effort, I suppose, to clarify everything, uh, the junior minister, Robert Troy, did an interview with Brian Dobson on RT Radio 1. And he said at the outset that he was uh, embarrassed, that he didn't give due diligence in areas that he should have, um, and that obviously he, he had regretted what happened. But he also went on to reveal in that interview that he owns or part owns effectively 11 properties, that he was in receipt of uh, the housing assistance payments, some of that we knew, but not that through the rental accommodation scheme. This was a contract that he'd had with, with Westmead County Council. Of which he used to be a councillor. Of which he used to be a county councillor. Um, what's interesting though in, in, in the interview from yesterday is that at this stage, as after two weeks of it, of uh, the drip feed nature of the whole, I suppose, story, if you want to call it that, it's kind of the where do we go from here with this uh -huh. now? Because we have the Thishuk and the Thonisha, and actually the housing minister as well, Darrow O'Brien, who have all declared support for Robert Troy. We have various different opposition TDs and opposition parties who spoke on this yesterday saying they're actually not so satisfied and they want further information, further clarity. The problem with that is that the doll doesn't actually resume until this day, three weeks' time. So we're now in a kind of a vacuum where it depends what, how much more momentum this story gains, well, if it grows legs over the course of the next three weeks. There's also too, just to say, some disquiet within his own Fianna Fáil yeah. uh, backbenches. There's actually the party thinking is due to take place in Robert Troy's Mullingar uh, in the coming days and weeks ahead too. In one of his houses. Which, well, it's, which is gonna prove somewhat <laughs> awkward for, uh, for, for Robert <laughs> Troy. Um, but it's, look, it's, 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 I think the, the issue with this story, and, and it's a confusing story for a lot of people, but. Yeah. If you have a half year on this, there's the, I you know, I did declare, I didn't declare, I declared, I didn't know I had to declare, but ultimately it kind of feeds into this picture of this is somebody who, as you mentioned, is a junior minister, uh, a long-standing politician of about 11 years, and it all comes down to a conversation around the ethics in public office. And what, what do you mean he didn't de declare what now? Uh, what was he so availing you have of? To, because well, listen, he's a landlord, which a lot of TDs are. A lot of TDs are. Which yeah, is nothing landlords. wrong with that. Absolutely. But the thing is that when you were a member of, of Dáil Éireann, when you are a TD, you have to declare your interests to SIPO, the Standards in, in Public Office Commission. And, and the reason that you do that is so that, for instance, if Tommy, you're a TD and, mm -hmm. and you're standing up in the Dáil yeah. and you want to speak about a certain issue or you think there should be further funding provided to X, Y and Z, that the public are acutely aware of where your interests lie. Okay, to be biased towards well, certain areas. Where the issue arises for, for Robert Troy was that he has said now that he made errors in the declaration of his property uh, portfolio. He just forgot a certain house. I mean, Ooh. when you've got 11, it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah, some of them. But he, the, I suppose the, the, big, the big issue is that he said he misunderstood the requirements around the rules and, and, and regulations. And he thought that you had to declare your property interests at the point in time of actually signing the declaration. Whereas I'm, I'm told already sold it. from people, yeah, if it had been sold, I'm told from people who have uh, previously filled out these forms um, that it has actually made quite clear on the form that it is any property that was in your possession between the 1st of January and the 31st of December uh, that year. Now, Robert. Troy, as I said, has, has uh, as in, in the words of Darrell O'Brien, the housing minister, put his hands up in relation to all this. OK, but let's talk about the fact, if you're sitting at home now, we're in a housing crisis, it's the ethics of what it is and why someone gets to gets into politics. Why have you gotten into politics? He is a part of the rental accommodation scheme. That's fine in Westmead. This mm. is, there's nothing wrong with that. He's perfectly entitled to do with that. Yeah. But also, he brought it up numerous times from 2014 in the Dáil. This is what he's done. He's yeah. asked about it. Yeah. He has said, uh, why, is, why aren't we putting more money into this? What's going on? Specifically in his constituency. He actually called for the government. He called for the government, money. yes, to put more, more money into it. it. And he is a recipient of money for this. Yeah. We're not and that's this why this declaration, in, in the, this declaration to SIPO, that's why it is so important. And you're right about that. Like a, a big part of this story, Murren, is the perception of this yes. for the Fianna Fáil party. And that's why there is so much disquiet 
among the Fianna Fáil backbenchers is that here we're in a situation at the moment where we have a government and a Fianna Fáil housing minister grappling to come to terms with this housing crisis. I mean, the stories today about, you know, the potential ECB, ECB um, mortgage interest rate hikes coming down the Two line. More. We further stories in the front of the tabloids today, you know, people that are facing homelessness. And then in the contrast to that, you know, you, you read this story um, about a junior minister who made an error, uh, as he says, in declaring his um, his property portfolio. I, I just, and it's, it's, it compounds, I suppose, a, um, a, a very difficult situation. Um, and it'll be just very interesting to see what happens over the course of the next three weeks. Three weeks is a very, very, very long yeah. time in politics. It is, but it's when, they're, when the government is off at the minute, if I wanted a story to come out about me, this is the time I'd want it. I don't know. Because, I, oh no, I, I, I think when there's no other stories on. going, it's the but then by the time it gets to three weeks' time, there's going to be so many other but matters all, to be discussed. But all we've got to do is discuss him, and it's like, is he going to be forced? We'd love to hear from you at home. What do you, what do you make of this? I like, just, how do you feel about it? Oh eight nine six triple one triple one. Because I, I I'm just really, love like I. He's the if like you're minister to buy of a house. company regulation. The minister of company regulation, and he's saying that he didn't understand the rules and regulations. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Say? It's uh, it's not unreasonable that the minister for 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 company regulation would, if you were even if you had difficulty in understanding what was required from you in this declaration and form, it's not an unreasonable request that if you were struggling to understand that, that you would make you would endeavour to at least uh, get assistance with filling out the form. I think if you had any queries. Yeah.